and we are on the air. Welcome everybody to the December 18th meeting <coughs> of the uh, Hopkinton Planning Board. Uh, today we are wearing holiday sweaters, except for me, mine is so obnoxious that I decided to put it on after the public hearing, mm. not to uh, disturb people's psyche. Uh, <laughs> that didn't bother uh, me at all. I'm like disturbing away. <laughs> so what we're going to do, if we, uh, if you don't mind, we're going to uh, do a quick uh, street acceptance, Legacy Farms Road South. Roy, do you want to come up? Thank you very much. I'm here this evening to request a planning board. Um, Endorse going to the town meeting in May for the acceptance of Legacy Farms Road South. Uh, we've been working closely with uh, John Westerling's office, the DPW, uh, Weston and Sampson, who's been working with us on a punch list. We've re uh, finished paving the entire road. We've replaced and added a number of signs. There are a number of things we have to do. We've got a couple of very minor things that will be done in the next few days. Other than that, I believe we are good to go to the town meeting. Okay. So, Jennifer, based yeah, on that? I mean, I would agree with everything that Mr. McDowell just said. You know, they worked really hard with us to, to bring it to this point. Um, so I don't um, see any reason why the board would not uh, vote to bring it to the town meeting. But, you know, there's somebody in the audience that would like to speak to this issue. Okay, we'll go to the board first, yeah. and then we'll go to the... Uh, I appreciate the, uh, the brickwork that uh, was put in place. Uh, I was a little concerned about the uh, brickwork by um, East Main Street, at that side of uh, the street. And uh, it's, it actually works out pretty nice. It's uh, it's real brick, as far as I can tell. And well, it's actually not real brick. It's actually the two minutes that's been in, embedded with color. And I think the nice thing about it is visually it's attractive. I think it, it, it's a visual deterrent to drive on it. But it whatever reason someone's cutting a sharp corner and they need to drive on it it's not going to cause an accident but you can you can feel it with your tires when you're no pressure driving. not that i drove over I actually think <laughs> and that was a recommendation of the board i think it was a good yep. idea mm -hmm. and then uh, down by the rotary it's, it's the same product exactly. and it, it actually came out i think quite nice that was Thank my you. major concern and it was done quite well Thank you. any other comments from uh Board. I, I did not get a chance to see it, but I, I'm taking Frank's word and Roy's word that thank you for doing it. So I have a question about process. Um, will, will the DPW speak to it at town meeting? I mean, are, are there two separate? So they'll typically um, let us know by town meeting that they're all set. If they had any issues, we would then pull pull it. Um, pull our approval. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I haven't heard it that he has any problems down there at this point. And then the only other question I have is, um, how do we get resident feedback on that process? <coughs> so it is Sorry. resident feedback. So the residents who live on the road, how do we I get their feedback? Uh, I could have had probably 300 residents here tonight. The reason being is they're all desperate to get the road approved because what's happening is, and I've, I've spoken quite a bit to the school committee, to the superintendent's office, to Norman, to others, about having the school bus drive through the property. And apparently, the Conley bus transportation system will not drive in a private road until it's accepted. We even offered to pay for additional insurance for them, and they wouldn't do it. So what's happening is we've got all the um, residents, a lot of them, parking their cars up near East Main Street uh -huh. and Legacy Farms Road in a big, long line uh -huh. along the edge of the road, dropping the kids off and picking the kids up, which, frankly, I don't find very safe because cars are coming, cars are going. I've tried to dissuade them from doing it, but they can't control it. But once the road is open, the bus will literally drive down the road and stop at various locations, which will make it a much safer situation. So the neighbors are um, strongly in support and would hope it happens soon. I wasn't aware that that happened, that unaccepted roads buses didn't go down. That's I don't know. That is true. Wow. Okay, well, thank you for that. <coughs> Just one comment I have about the uh, town meeting. Usually for the street acceptances, there, there's usually no discussion. I wouldn't imagine this would be any different, right? Sometimes there is. I was going to say, that has not yeah. always <laughs> been the case. Yeah. Well, the that's ones I've a, seen, but that's yeah. a sunny outlook to have. <laughs> that's that's right. You know, Mr. Optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. 
So what would we be doing tonight? It would just voting for a placeholder? So typically or? the way it works for our street acceptances is the planning board submits all of the street acceptances that are ready in one article. Um, they're not typically submitted by the developer or by a resident. The planning board submits those because you approve the subdivision. So um, he's here tonight to ask you to include this street as one of your streets. So you could either vote tonight to include it. There'll be, um, in January, there'll be um, two other streets coming before you for requests for acceptance as well so um you know you can decide that if you want to include all three or you can let him know tonight however you want to handle it okay i'm comfortable putting it forward for town meeting and understanding that we'll hear from the dpw mm -hmm. there's, there's, one, there's, one, there's, there's there is one person in the audience okay. oh yes and we have comments from uh come on up Thank you. Okay, a few minutes Take, Take your, your time. time. <clears throat> I finally found that first step that everybody tells you to watch out. Oh. <laughs> and if you can identify yourself and your address up at the microphone, either uh, you know, it's the next to Rob when you get back up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least not with any Joe Regan, previous, previous trade warden, right, Joe? Yeah, yeah, old times. Uh, yes, and I agree. It is a nice job down there, don't get me wrong. I do see one fly in the ointment, and my question is, maybe if, maybe I'm shooting down the wrong street here. When we accept that, we also accept, Jennifer, I called you on this, you know where I'm going with this. Has anybody driven through there since the last snowstorm? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't see a raising of hands. All right, Diane, mm -hmm. bring those up, please. Um, and I plowed enough snow to know that you can't blame the snow plowers on this. But I know we have no worms because it's called the country something or other. But to put that, you can pass those around, please. Only half a dozen of them. I have my son take a picture of those. To see the damage that's down there by a snow plow. And you can put all the stakes you want. If it snows hard, you can't see where you're going. The ground is soft. That was part of the problem, I think, Roy. We understand that. But you push the snow off to the side, or if the vehicle drives off to the side, you've got a mess down there right now. Uh, right now, it's on. The association's dime, I would assume. Somebody's gonna pay for that. We accept that street. I guess the question is how far off the road do we accept? And to that end, may I just read one quick note here. I asked the landscaper to take a ride by through. And the damage y'all looking at now, Adam West is a reputable landscaper here mm -hmm. in town, and we're gonna be stuck with this people if we don't I don't know what the alternative will have a few, but I'm sure they're not gonna be and how acceptable. As you request, I'm getting back to you with the cost of the work we discussed. I looked at both sides of the road from Clinton Street to 135 and the Lexi Farm development. As you know, the shoulders of the road have been driven all over and all right of that. Well, that was when they were parking off to the side. When they, yeah, and people should have more rights than that. I'm sorry, they don't. Whatever. They parked off, they made a mess, they repaired it again. They've been repairing quite a bit, and it came in very nicely. This is after the plowing now. If I had to give an estimate for repairing the shoulders as they are right now, I would say it would cost between $1,800 and $2,200. All the ruts need to be raked up, filled in with screen topsoil. Everything would have to be hand raked and seeded, hydro sitting with disturbed lawn areas, probably an additional four to 600. This is Adam's suggestion. I think the shoulders off the road need to be lowered. Well, then somebody could drive off and get stuck anyway. Stakes or no stakes, people are gonna drive and keep plowing. And my question is, once we accept that, are we on the hook for this kind of money every spring once we once that damage occurs? And it's gonna occur, there's no way out of it. My, my suggestion, obviously berms don't work. I think Roy and I know those are all get plowed up off to the side. Either that or excavate that and put the trap rock in that's already a few feet old to allow the drainage. And if you happen to go off the road with a plow or if somebody drives off the edge of the road, you're driving on that best <coughs> trap rock. It's big cut anyway. There's no damage. Um, the other thing would be to let the association pay for it. But I believe if we accept that role, am I correct in assuming that we're gonna have to pay for all this damage? And that's only one little storm like that. That isn't the whole season. Can I, can I respond to that? All right. um, anytime you plow a road without a berm, I don't care whose road it is, you're gonna get some minor damage. Everybody knows it with their own driveway. So that's just a common occurrence. This particular situation is much more uh, is worse, frankly, than you would normally have. And the reason being is when we paved the road late this fall, we loaned and seeded that very, very recently. Now, granted, the seed came up, 
that it was still very tender. And the ground hasn't frozen. It's a tender situation. The seed really needs a, a full year to germinate to properly fill in. So this year it was extremely vulnerable. And we'll, we will be reseeding that again in the spring prior to or right about the time, probably around the time we're going to go to town meeting. So in fact, it will be done. It will have a full season to secure itself, unlike this year. So the town will be getting in a much better situation. Through the chair. It seems as though whenever a plow is going to go through, though, they're going to scrape off that top layer. Well, you, it's not so much as a top layer. I mean, we've been staking this road, but to, to the point where you'll get occasional uh, edges that are hit, there's no question. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's true of any other road in town, I imagine, if, if, you, don't, if you don't. Now, I, my guess is that down, the town probably doesn't go around and reseed, is my guess. And it's probably going to be the choice of the homeowner association if they want to do that. Now, in talking to John Westerling, I'm not so sure you plow sidewalks either. Does anybody know the answer to that? They definitely plow downtown by my house. Yeah, they don't plan. But not everywhere else. They, right. they have a thrower that goes down the sidewalks and throws the snow. But that's not every sidewalk. The, I don't believe they do every no. sidewalk. No. no. Yeah, I'd say he do, did mention well, that. I they're do, only yeah, walking distance. Right. Yeah, they have to right. right. part of the street. So they do do sidewalks is what yeah. I'm saying. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I think Correct. I'm not so sure this road should be treated any, any differently than any other road in town, whether it be for repairs, reseeding, plowing, whatever the case may be. I will say that this year uh, the edges are much worse than they would have been because they weren't seeded until I think October. And between October and now, they had no ch time to, to really stabilize itself. So back to my point, in the spring, right around town meeting or slightly before or after, depending on weather, we're going to reseed both shoulders again. So by the time we get into next winter, it'll have had eight or nine months to secure itself. Through the chair. Yeah. So Joe, you're not aware of this, but just about everybody else over here is that I, I've never been a fan of the, it's called a low impact design, the lid, where you don't have any curbs and you just have the rocks with drain off. I, I think it was, in my personal opinion, I think it was a mistake for the town to go that route. Um, I think curbs would have been fine. Um, every other neighborhood that we've ever built has curbs and it's snow plowing is not an issue. So I was just wondering why you thought curbs don't work. Well, it isn't so much the curbs. Like East Main, we they just did a bunch of sidewalks going down there and they have a hot top berm up against the hot top sidewalk. So you have some support behind it. Yeah. Berms break up all the time, especially if you get a, a snow before it's cold and okay. the berm hasn't had a chance to set. And if there's no nothing behind it, to stop it from breaking. You get a one or two right. inch an hour, you get a white out, you hit those, they're gone. Yeah, I, That's I understand. That's what I'm saying. I think it'll be a waste of money. But, but, I, but I've work. seen in all I've seen all, in all the neighborhoods that it, it does work. You get because if it's built properly with the proper sod and turf behind it, but you're right, once in a while it does it does kick out, but for the most part I think it works, just my personal opinion. Uh, the, the the difference here is go back ten years ago and uh, I think Muriel's and chair of the selectman at the time. And when we were doing scoping sessions, we were doing planning with, um, I forget the firm you hired, I'm drawing a blank, the landscape architectural firm, pretty renowned out of Watertown. Um, it was decided that for this yeah. size of development, that, that the concept was going to be the whole development should be low impact development. So everything was designed on that basis. Drainage was designed on that basis, retention areas, and that's for literally the whole project. It will be coming to you soon on the 180 units of. Uh, age restricted, which is designed in the same concept to complete the idea. The only difference is now we're coming with slightly wider roads because the fire department or planning board has made the roads from 18 feet to 20 feet. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a lot of history to why it is that way. And statewide, it's been very much encouraged to do the same thing because what you're getting is you're getting general flow and sheet runoff rather than concentration. Mm -hmm. But there are, there are a few, you know, there are a few trade-offs, and that is you're going to get things. mixed shoulders now and then, and you have to receive them. And my guess is the homeowner association who wants to keep the place looking nice, they're probably going to do a few more things the town may have wanted to do, or, or I shouldn't say may have wanted, probably doesn't want to do, and we'll, we'll probably deal with some of that ourselves also. Yeah, I wanted to point out that yeah. it was us who told you to do that, so it wasn't anything against you individually. I was just I making you. a statement for the, the town and what I thought. Um, and I just want to make one other point that I, I only felt that they were needed on the main roads, Legacy North and Legacy South. I think all the other small side roads, it, it, was, it works out fine. Okay. okay. <coughs> uh, I do agree with David's uh, sentiment on this. 
And um, I remember those discussions. And um, from my experience in town, I, I have 300 feet of, of street. And uh, at the very beginning, it, there was no curb or lip at all. And storm water would come into my yard. And it would be kind of bad. Um, Sometimes in the winter with plowing and buses moving over for cars and traffic, there'd be muddy tracks on the edge. Uh, and I would reseed myself and you know, make it look nice and mow and um, every spring. Yeah. Okay. But 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 when the DPW came through and they made a, a lift for most of that length, uh, it's really improved uh, that property and keeps it nice. And when every now and then a car might get up onto it, but it's easier to fix. Uh, and it, but there is a section that isn't like that, and that is a muddy mess sometimes. And uh, I'm just wondering. Um, what is a way that we could, at this point, handle this and make it better? Is that an option at this point? Well, I think the build per approved plan, so we don't have the ability to go back. What I would suggest is, Roy, if you prepare a letter stating that it will be receded, et cetera, uh, and have that presented to us for the file, we'll hold off on the vote until January and we'll do all three streets at the same time. And then realized if nothing's done at town meeting, you're going to have to get up and explain why we have a letter and nothing was done at oh, town meeting. Oh, trust me, it'll be done. OK. <laughs> so, There's no way I'm showing uh, up to town meeting and not have it at time. <laughs> if that meets with everybody's approval. Sorry, it was me. I just had one comment. Sorry. We'll have comments from the DPW by then, too. Right? Yeah. Right, oh, yeah. OK. I'm, so, I'm sorry. We'll have comments from the DPW before we accept oh, yes. in yeah. the spring. Yeah. yeah. Um, John, just for clarity, all three streets, did you say? What? <coughs> no, well, in other words, we'll, oh. we'll, we'll do the approval at one time okay. for one, two, or three streets, assuming they meet the, the approval. My last question now, um, when we do the north side, there's some nice views up there, by the way. It is going to be a nice place to live. I can't afford a nice place to live. Are we going to do it the same way, or can we wait after if this, this is the way you told them to do it? I understand that. I'm just looking for preventative measures for the north side. Maybe we can look at it differently. If you go back in there after the last snowstorm and see what it looks like, we might have a different opinion on how to do it on the north side. The north side has actually been built. It's already down to that. It's you know, loomed and seeded already. <coughs> uh, yeah, it's all loomed and seeded, and the only difference is when we put the finished coat of paving in, we'll raise that, obviously, that seeding in to finish it. But the roads, for all intents and purposes, have been complete short of uh, trees and uh, finished coat of paving and seating. So basically, you're telling me that we are going to be stuck with this? Well, the, the north road was designed exactly the same way the south road was. Well, I think we follow the same maintenance that the rest of the town, which is if there is a disturbance outside of the paved area, the town does not fix it or replace it, that the adjacent resident uh, does it if they deem to. So, uh, well, if, if, if that is your new town -wide, to if that's your town wide policy, then you won't have an issue with not repairing it. We'll have no, to absolutely not. Uh, correct. No, absolutely we'll have to have correct. Homeowner association do it if yeah. that's your town wide policy. Yeah, we don't, I don't we believe check we'll enough. check on that. Okay. But I've never seen them come up my street. That, that was my impression, too. Yeah. Um, just one, one thing. In your experience, <clears throat> have you found any other methods of dealing with such situations? It, I, mean, I know we asked you to we asked you to to do it this way, uh, and I think it's unfair I, no, to it, frankly. This is that, this is very much in vogue right now. I mean, it's being done a lot of places, a lot, and there's a lot of positive attributes to it. Mm -hmm. I think if let's let's just take the South Road as an example, the North Road probably the same idea, maybe a little bit more. Let's assume, just for argument's sake, that's going to cost $2,000 a year to reseed and touch it up every spring. Frankly, it's not a big deal. I mean, if, if the homeowners association had to do it, I mean, if you've got uh, 400 homeowners on the south side, it's $50 a piece. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal, if, if that's your town-wide policy. I'm going to suggest yeah. that we need to move on because yes. we have yeah. the fire chief yeah. and the yeah. police chief waiting. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, if that's a Thank policy, you. then I have no problem with it as long as we're not on the hook for that. Right. I think it would have to be written in to make sure. Well, if it's a policy, why don't you be written in? It's your policy. Oh, well, she's got to look it up. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Uh, before we move on, Roy, I have one comment. Sure. 
we in August, I think, uh, discussed the Pulte sign. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. And what I have noticed is, at the same time, there is a new home, Pulte, a new home sign on Legacy Farms Road North, about 70 feet. Yeah. north of Main Street. I noticed that too, yeah. And I find it a little bit disturbing when we wouldn't allow it on one corner that it appears. Well, actually, I think they put that sign up last fall, frankly, before I think they asked you about the other one. Right, so yeah. I would have expected them to take it down. Well, and I didn't, I, again, I wasn't involved in those conversations. But whose property is that? Uh, that's our property. Then I would expect you to have them take it down. Well, can, you, can they at least come speak to you about it? No. I take it come, but I, my well, personal opinion is when we already said no, come back. Well, no, that's the, not the location they asked for a sign. No, but it's the it's. Do I have any disagreement from the board? It's a discussion it, we had. It's a discussion we had. Is to come here. back before uh, you do anything. We, if it's a directional sign, et cetera, we would consider it. But instead of doing something and coming back to us, they just placed it on their own. Again, I wasn't at the meeting you had with right. them, so I, I wasn't aware of what transpired. Right, so what we said is a directional, we didn't want a six year for sale sign up. Yeah. If there's a directional sign naming the street, maybe bypass, directing people for the bypass, uh, something like that, we'd be willing to work with them and they would come back. But instead of coming back, the sign went up. Again, I wasn't here, so I don't, right. know, I don't know what transpired. The only thing I was told was they were going to come see you about putting a sign on 83's Main Street across the street from the current whited out sign that they have. Well, obviously Which they, they did, and they were told no. Okay, right. and I, I heard about that. Okay. For, other than that, I, I don't know anything about other signs. Right. But since it's on your property, I would expect you right. to So I will call Pulte to tomorrow. Is, is this a conversation they can have with you or no? With the, the building inspector or...? Well, well, consider an off-premise sign, and I believe that needs your approval. So what, what, Correct. It's an off-premise sign that's been up for four months now, almost. At least. And when they were told, no off-premise sign, come back to us if you want one, and they put it up without coming back to us. Okay, so I understand why you're, you're right. ticked off about that. I get yeah. that. Can we come back to you and apply for that sign? Well, I would wait at least another four months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you're not serious. Are you? Yes, I am. Well, we, when, were, when, we weren't amenable to it, so yeah. I don't. I don't know. I, I think it's kind of a waste of time. I, I don't but, think they have asked you about that location. Well, but they asked but us about the general, concept of it. The concept of off premise sign was and not amenable. Did no. so they go to the building department get a building permit? What do they do? Well, they, the building permit, the building department can't issue a permit because it's off premise until these people, this board says that it's okay. Okay. And that's why they came before the And what we board. suggested was a directional sign <clears throat> pointing to, <coughs> because their idea is they needed to direct potential buyers up. What so identify a sign, a bigger sign, saying Legacy Farms Road North, bypass to 85, something like that, we would take into consideration. Okay. But so we I, were not open to, at that point, a houses for sale this way sign. I think the reason, why, again, I wasn't involved in what the, they com had conversation with you about. I think what was happening, again, given it from their perspective, because they had that sales tra lease, a sales trailer down there for so long, everybody knew that's where to go. When that went away, people were driving all through that southern neighborhood wondering, well, where do I go now? So no one knew where to go. And the neighbors were getting annoyed because cars were coming and going through their neighborhood. And they probably felt, I'm guessing, because I haven't discussed it, if we put a sign to at least direct people where to go, they're not going to be annoying all the current neighbors. Right, which is why they presented to <laughs> yeah. us and we said no. Yeah, that's the exact argument. And we said come back used. to us, and they opted not to come back to us, but to do something on their own. Okay, so you're, I, I get, I get where you're, you're at. <laughs> and I think one of the other comments that I had is that even if you look at the Pulte map, it might have been changed, but at the time, it showed a floating dot on a Google map because the road isn't on Google Maps, and no direction <coughs> saying access to a Legacy Farms Road North, you know, et cetera. So they, from a PR point of view and a publication point of view, 
they weren't even taking the steps to do a static map showing where the homes are. And it's no wonder why people are confused. But I don't want, we're already at okay. 757. I will relay the message okay. and um, I would, one of us will get back to you. Thank you. Thank you. One quick final note, just real quick. How many streets are going for approval? I'm sorry, what? Is there a bunch of streets going for approval? No, he only has one. Okay. okay. But there are, Jennifer there are mentioned. In <coughs> January, there's two other streets and other parts of town <coughs> that are coming to this board to request street acceptance. So and then we the package three. them together and oh. submit it as one package. Thank you. Thank you very much. And sorry for the delay, but we will uh, let you uh, expand the time. So come on up. I think this is the first time I ever see the police chief without a uniform. I know. So if you want to introduce yourself uh, for our uh, television audience. And uh, there is a hard copy of his presentation on your in front of you. And then I'll let you two fight it out at once go first. Uh, Edward Lee, Chief of Police of the Hopkinton Police Department. Steve Salmon, Fire Chief, Emergency Management Director. And uh, together we're your public safety officials that we try to do some joint work. One of our projects this year. First off, just let me say thank you very much for allowing us to come in tonight and have some dialogue. Um, I think you're one of the first boards that I started as a fire chief doing some work with directly. And um, uh, just your con just the last half an hour kind of segues into, I love the way that you work dialogue, work problems, and that's kind of what we were looking forward to uh, talking to you about tonight. So thank you very much for having us. I put together a brief PowerPoint, not to kill you, but just to give you a little bit of background so we could maybe have a little of a dialogue with the time remaining. Um, basically, our conversation is um, about community risk reduction or preparedness. Um, community risk reduction is the identification and prioritization of risk followed by the coordinated application of resources to minimize occurrences of unwanted events. So again, I kind of watched the last 20 minutes and said I watched you working on some to see whether they're wanted or unwanted events. That's just the dialogue and relationship I look at in our public safety view just to get going on the issues. So I like seeing it. Community risk reduction process. I Chief, put six you want bullets. Just for the TV, oh, you know. I gotta do this. Thing. <laughs> yeah. oh, Chief, I think I think you're up. <laughs> <laughs> so there's six points for the risk reduction process. Uh, you know, tonight we're looking on the first three, which is identifying local risk that currently or potentially have the probability to impact the community, to prioritize the risk to be addressed and to develop strategies to prevent and mitigate the prioritized risk. The broader work in that conversation is to develop a community risk reduction plan, to implement a plan and evaluate it as needed. So just the abbreviation of that is identify, prioritize, and strategize some of the prevention methods we can work on. Again, I'm kind of looking at you as a group. I don't want it to just be the chief and I sitting in our offices of public safety uh, stewing on all, all this. So I use the term risk a lot. What is risk? The concept of risk is best described as a vulnerability for harm or damage to life, property, or community. The five areas of vulnerability in a community, or these are the effects human, economic, social, political environment. And again, I'm sure you're familiar with these terms, but I'll just touch on them quick. You know, human is what directly happens to us, whether we're injured or um, economic might be the, uh, um, the cost for a response to an emergency, the uh, replacement of the damage at an emergency. It may be some lost tax revenue um, from a lost property. Social can be kind of the impact to the fabric of our community if we have a bad event. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the fires in California right now and just looking at how it goes across all of these spectrums, but you can really see the faces of a community that's just devastated. They're just sitting there going, wow. Um, politically, um, we're dealing with some issues that uh, I, I think a good example was today, I watched the uh, train accident and already they're starting to ask questions about whether the train had 
certain types of accelerator controls on it, and, and they're saying, oh, if people didn't address that, what a shame. And to me, that's just an example of the politics that um, we're trying to get in front of so that we're taking care of our community. And then environmental is um, most recent for Hockington. We dealt with uh, droughts the year before that were a pretty major impact, and not in the scheme of some of the other incidents I just mentioned, but they affected us all. And um, we had some storms where we had uh, a few of our residents that were out of power for greater than 48 hours, and that's not, you know, we're not used to that and don't like it. So the type of pieces I want to get in our conversation. Risk variables that we use in our assessments are frequency, severity, duration, and capacity. I think they're self-explanatory. That kind of led into the title in your packet where we've talked to a few of the um, um, groups that have come into the planning board and talked about our capacity to serve you. Again, the chief and I are trying to get into even a broader conversation than just response. That's just, response is just one aspect of us going. But um, you know, last year, my budget focused on just adding a fire prevention officer, which um, is a lower cost, but hopefully we're actually going to get more return if we um, get some of the effects of code enforcement or education, um, information passed out, engagement with the community. Uh, hopefully that will lower incidents um, or effects of incidents uh, versus us totally focusing on responses, which would you probably feel like every town meeting that you're dealing with. So. So now the kind of meat and potato, oh, one more slide here, actually. Achieve the right balance is something we go through, so I kind of just touched on it, which is educating and engaging the uh, public or a committee like yours, which we're doing tonight. Engineering are just kind of some of the systems to help out. You know, you look at a building like this, and there's exit signs, there's a sprinkler system, there was a defibrillator when we walked in. Those are kind of systems that help deal with some of the problems. Uh, enforcement might be policy or code that we look for when we work with these buildings that the public enter into, or it might be um, something like the driveways and, and talking to the community about accessing your house. And then uh, economic incentives are uh, some of these initiatives we do, you actually get savings. It might be on your um, insurance bill for your homeowner's insurance. Uh, you might get the recognition of a safe community like the police has, have brought us into and feel some pride. And, uh, and again, then there's emergency response, which is um, we may improve our response or we may increase our response to the community. So I couldn't help but get a little picture here. One of our big plannings is we work with Marathon, and I didn't want to give away any of our uh, tactical objectives there, but to get a little giggle out of the whole meeting is, you know, a lot of everybody remembers what we went through with bathrooms and uh, Porta potty, so that's kind of the ongoing joke. But it is preparedness and planning and dealing with issues so our community feels better about events that are here. So uh, just trying to strike that note. <laughs> On this slide, I just talked about risk factor examples. I'm kind of hoping where we can start the dialogue here. So I've already set the background uh, of, of what we're preparing you here for tonight. But um, the factors that you see here, we've already started talking to the Board of Selectmen. We've already started talking to some of the seniors or impacts some of the other boards. Um, we're feeling the community growth this year. There was actually a level that I turned to the board a few months ago that I said it's actually unexpected. It's higher than anything I had projected. I've um, tried to deliver some standard numbers I use to calculate impact. And you literally go back to the 1990 growth was the only thing close to something like this, but literally we took away numbers like that, that um, kind of percent of impact, call requests for service, you know, based on population or regular group, grouped usage types, um, it's a higher rate. So I've mentioned a few to your board. We've had some conversations in some individual meetings, but this is a much better platform for us to have the broad discussion. Um, you see some of the subsets is population growth, uh, change in occupancy, which we've talked about a little bit, uh, change in demographic, change in service request. They impact our call volume. One of the other searching points we saw was just um, behavioral health issues in our society. I did some tracking and it's just uh, become more of an impact 
I don't know all the reasons. I just kind of, it's a data point that we talked about and uh, it shows itself at a greater rate than the population growth. Our uh, square miles haven't changed at all, but it's, as we grow, it's always an impact to cover 28 square miles with the resources we have. Some of the little things like highways and lakes that are in between it all um, make it so we have some of our rural areas that are more challenging and we're trying to look ahead next five or 10 years so that those people are realizing the expectation of the service to them based on the growth of our community. So I mentioned highways, man-made disasters. Um, we've had some recent storms that kind of uh, have opened our eyes a little bit. We're talking about some target hazards like the gas gates and some uh, expansion at the LNG plant, which just makes our group have more communication uh, with our community. Open space has kind of been the new piece, but Hockington's really done a lot of work in the last two years, and now we're getting ready to explore into our woods more, and it just, um, it might be every, anything from somebody hurt in the woods, or a lost person in the woods, or um, somebody with behavioral health that goes away in the woods. Those are all the types of incidents that we're working on that give us a new challenge, so I'll just share that with you. It's something we have to deal with. And then most recently, um, the marijuana legislation just thinking back on the uh, opiate crisis that we've been dealing with. There's just a lot of unknowns there, so I just bring them up as a, as a point that we're talking about a lot as a community how to deal with. The more open discussion, the more real factors we get, any data points that the chief and I can bring, um, we're trying to talk to you a lot about. I did a lot of talking there in my <laughs> 10 minutes here, so I'll pause for a second. I think that's a good chance just to kind of allow some conversation back to you if you want to add anything at this point or get our group talking your call no this this town is growing obviously on the planning board you know that and um, the biggest thing is this town has a certain I would say uh, we're spoiled we have a certain expectation of calls for service and people responding to the house we do a lot of extra things on the police department mm -hmm. uh, such as security checks for people when they go on a vacation I think we did 3,000 of them uh, wow. last year yeah. So it's just those uh, little things like that. When you see that growth, uh, you just don't want to play catch up. You don't want to uh, just be able to go to call to call and cover. We're thinking of, of growth where you can continue that, that level of expectation that the public wants from us and also work on our, our, our goals for being prepared for other situations and growing in other ways, such as uh, an SRO officer, canine, things, things things of that nature um, you know, to keep us, to keep our head above water, but even more than that, that's my goal. Okay. Comments, why don't we go with a... Okay. I'm just gonna say that, you know, Steve, you both have given us a bunch of uh, input, and a lot of it's about being proactive instead of reactive, so that's that's good that we're all thinking about that. Um, I just had one quick question about the highway access changes that I saw in there. Any, can you ex expound on that a little bit? Yeah, so the, they're doing a major reconstruction of the 495 Mass Pike interchange, so they've done a couple segments that you've seen by removing the toll booth. Part of their work means that they have to meet federal standards with the finished product. Um, so just the example of the first impact that we had is um, our ability to cover, say, the southbound from the Mass Pike Lane. We used to be able to do a flip at the interchange. Okay. So something like that, we just can't do the turn at the interchange anymore. They, you, you might have seen they put in a few little gravel and mm -hmm. That's just because the fire chief screened for a week and they put in some things short term. It's so far away though too. Just yeah, because, it, and again, I entered into some, to some emergency agreements with Westboro Fire so that, you know, for me, getting the right location on that highway is a challenge and sure. then you take away the chance to access it from a few areas, it just creates a, a more of a challenge. On 495, you know how they have the little cut throughs you might see in the roadway? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't use them a lot but they can make a big difference. And right. so they're gonna, those will be gone when they're done fixing an area because new standards just don't, don't allow that type of access on the highway. So I've been, I go to the DOT meetings and we work to see if they could construct something that would be um, a lot, improve on the access. You know, they may not, and, and it may just take longer for somebody 
that needs help up on the highway for us to make a loop, um, and we'll do the best we can with it. But it's getting the dialogue going on, on something like that. Okay, great. Thanks. I, I just when I saw it, I, I was wondering if you were asking for some changes to the access to the highway. But it's just the opposite. You're trying to work with them and, and figure out what's best for us. Well, it, it is both. So I asked okay. them to explore. I said part of their project took away an access, so it makes us right. say go to Route Nine. So I asked them to explore whether they could potentially put in say their plow trucks are having the same problem. So I wasn't the only one in the room. Their plow trucks mm -hmm. are in there screaming at them also, which helped. So they may put a snow gate, say, on Fruit Street. But there's all sorts of other impacts when they do something like create. There's cost, there's environmental impact, there's wetlands, there's all these impacts. But if they could put a snow gate, it may help us on the highway. It may help us access a section of town in a different manner. Uh, so I'm trying to get dialogue going. Much of this, I don't know what the right answer is yet. You know, kind of like what you did earlier. Who knows what the right answers are yet? It's getting the dialogue going, making sure we've explored as much as we can, uh, listening to the community members and seeing if there's something we didn't dig up yet. So great, thanks. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I just want to say thank you for for bringing a lot of this stuff to our attention because it's a lot of things that we don't necessarily think through. Um, what really strikes me is the open space access, and that's something that we've been really strong on um, as a board, and uh, not only accessing it, but I mean, <laughs> the dangers that are associated with it, particularly sure. also now, uh, now bear sightings and sure. all these other things that, that are gonna come along with it. So I just wanna say thank you for that. Is, and I guess a quick question is like, do we have a means of access? I'm, a, I'm an avid mountain biker up in the College Rock area. Sure. And uh, you know, always bring a phone, always bring a friend, yep. somebody to rescue me if I hurt myself. But what, I mean, is, do we have town facilities for, for addressing emergencies out in the trails? Great question. I, I literally, you know, the committees that you have that are dealing with the trails right now have been active. They, they actually um, come in and ask me questions so, so far on the center trail and some of the work they're doing on Granite Street right now, instead of putting a boulder on the end of the road where you might access it, you know, that's mm -hmm. kind of the traditional don't go in here with your truck piece. You know, they're, they're buying these pillars or ballast that um, can be pulled out and they have put a lock on that we can have a common key that's easy mm -hmm. for us to get into. Uh, some of our equipment that we've received in the last five years is we've got a, a gator with a medical bed that can help access it. And then, again, it's just realizing that um, it's a little more manpower intensive to do some of those. You know, we've done it in the past, and extricating somebody that's injured deeper in the woods takes mm -hmm. some work, and that's an impact on the rest of our community uh, when we do it. And that's okay. It's as long as we realize it's it's coming with, with what we're doing. And, we're comfortable with the resources and we have that conversation. So right. I think the real solutions to that it, are uh, are gonna be coming more like identifying better right where you are, like you said, your cell phone, and they have some more GPS technology. Enhanced 911 is improving so that kind of that link can give us a more specific area, which we've had some issues in the past. So hopefully mm -hmm. that will keep improving as we go. Okay. We do have a great relationship with the uh, Massachusetts State Police too. And uh, especially, they, they've certainly assisted us on uh, people lost in the woods. And they have the technology on their their, their helicopters where they're able to point someone's cell phone and actually uh, connect with that cell phone. Hmm. Uh, things of that nature. And you're starting to see other uh, technology out there that a lot of departments that can't afford a helicopter, are using <coughs> such as uh, drones and things of that nature to locate people. Hmm. And some are even dropping off. Uh, an EMD or something along those lines. So, so that's, that's pretty poor other equipment. So, excuse me one second. Yeah. Can I move to open and continue the public it. hearing? Yes. Okay. I will make that motion. Okay. Do we have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So carried. And thank you for your patience back there on the public hearing. We're gonna. Uh, get to you as soon as we finish with this. Amy? Yeah, so I also wanted to thank you for coming and um, I think it's in the, one of our master plan action items that we're going to try to ask developers when they propose a new subdivision to show us the impacts on develop on um, like how many more emergency calls they might need or school town servi services. Yeah. Kind of services like town services, school, fireplace. And I think that'll be really helpful. Um, sure. I mean I think 
I assume you're going to go before the other boards, like the selectmen too, and the schools about this sort of thing. Because I think it, the more we all has better publicity, and we all know about the increasing needs for <coughs> different types of services, the more we're willing to spend more of our tax dollars at town meeting to increase the services that are needed. Because we've heard here about how, like at the Golden Pond, you have more co emergency calls, but you know, in other neighborhoods, you might just have more school children and not more emergency calls. Um, and also, it really hit home with me about a month ago. I think we had the hurricanes, and trees were down on several different roads all at once. And it made me realize, for as a planning board, like we couldn't get through to different places very easily. We had to go very long roundabout ways. And then we really need to be thinking about that. Do we have, you know, other ways through, you know, whenever we can? So anyway, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, good job, Mr. The other guys. Um, Chief Slayman, uh, you have my complete support. On, uh, <coughs> I'm following your interviews about the interchange with Mass Pike and 495. Um, the emergency access is uh, very important. And uh, that little turnaround, I noticed when they put it in, but it's, it, you get two fire trucks there, they could be stuck. And that it does make things a lot worse. So they should be including a turnaround um, or making it easier along the highway where they can. And, and, and then the interchange. Um, two things uh, more. Uh, chiefly, you mentioned there were 3,000 calls a year for uh, home checks. And how many of those are actually uh, an issue? Like, is it very low percentage? No, this is just a, uh, I can give you the stats on how many uh, burglary uh, calls we have, for a lot of calls we do. This is just uh, a, a service we provide for the community, a lot of residents go away during the summer, um, we'll uh, check the house on a, a daily basis. Uh, That's a home check based on an alarm kind of situation? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Just, no. Out of, just out of the fact that they won't be there. Just a quick call, call and then ask yeah. for So you go out to the uh, station and say, I'm going to be away from August 1st, August 10th, get to keep an eye on my uh, uh, home while, while uh, we're going. You kind of go above and beyond in other departments. Mm -hmm. and actually Is there like 10 of those a day, kind of on average, you're saying? Or? Yeah, it can be, mostly uh, 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 in the summer. Is it a, a major drain, or is it just, does it fit in with your budget? Right now, it fits in, and uh, we're able to do it, uh, you know, t time permitting. It, uh, any other call will take a priority over it. But um, it how, many, how many of those times is it actually something that's an emergency or a Important, like, uh, just on a, a, a natural a, a home reason. Check. We have yeah. found house, uh, houses that have been uh, broken into. Why well, residents have that gone? I give you. I'm just wondering percentage-wise and uh, cost-effectiveness. Yeah. Uh, um, the last thing I want to say is words are very, very powerful. In, in in item eight on risk factors, you guys have marijuana legalization slash the opioid problem, and two different issues. Mm -hmm. um, marijuana is legalized. Opioids are illegal medicine that are being abused, mm -hmm. leading to further dangerous situations. But uh, both these things shouldn't be linked together in the same line, uh, because you're going to be talking to other boards. And other, I just think that it should be. I know you have have both have concerns, um, but they should be maybe set two separate lines. It's two separate issues. And I know it's not my turn mm -hmm. yet, but I actually that was going to be my comment. I I concur wholeheartedly. I think they're two very different. Uh, situations, um, you know, to Frank's point, one is a legalization mm -hmm. uh, situation, and one of them is a is a is a terrible problem that we have, and I I think to connect the two together is is not necessarily the the right thing to do. Yeah, I think what, uh, what we're alluding to is that they're just the issues that come up that are problems for police and for fire. The marijuana more problems for police because we're dealing with a situation right now where there are a lot of people, we all know how bad an OUI is, uh, there are a lot of people under the influence of marijuana that are out there, and currently <coughs> there's really not the, the proper test to detect what you would have with the breathalyzer. So this is a, uh, just being mentioned as a challenge that we have to deal with throughout the state, okay. and mm -hmm. uh, other states are going through this uh, as well. We do have uh, drug guide uh, recognition offices that are able to spot certain things, but there's a lot of training that's involved in that, and we only actually have one officer that that uh, has been trained uh, to do that at this time. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, I, I think it was just, in general, 
problems that we're, we're dealing with that weren't there before. <laughs> I that understand makes, the point. No, but the, that I, makes I sense. Actually, the explanation makes makes yeah. perfect and sense. And I added it in yeah. afterwards. I did a first presentation to the board. Yeah. And, and then I realized I left out that crisis will be a crisis that I put. So I apologize. I couldn't No, no, I, 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 no apology needed. I, I, I think dialogue. what I would do is, uh, it, again, if this was something that you were going to present yep. uh, elsewhere, make them two separate line items. Because so agreed that they they both present issues. I, but yeah. I get it. Okay. Yep. I mean, you guys are in the front lines. Yeah. Your and your staff are, are are on the front lines, and opioids. That's a people are dying, and, and it's it's Come hard to. I got it. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I, ha I sort of have a more um, a specific question. Like, I want to get to how we work together um, to quantify the changes and the stresses on your department you know how how do we how do we communicate the metrics to the public um, together how do we as a board work with the metrics that you use mm -hmm. to um, determine how um, you know your your level of readiness and so forth and I think um, uh, I, you said it but I can't stress enough for myself and to the public um, how fortunate we are that when we call, um, there is an overwhelmingly quick and capable and uh, reasoned response. And I know um, in the past 20, 12 months, I've had a couple of occasions where your department has responded to a family member of mine. <laughs> um, everybody's fine, but um, the, um, on every occasion, um, it's been the sixth or seventh call. The department is stressed. At, on every occasion, my family member has been dealt with and addressed with, with great presence and, and professionalism and so forth. But uh, I am aware that the department is stressed almost all the time. Um, so I want to I, I wanna begin to, to have that conversation um, always. Right, because I think that uh, we we you don't know how it impacts you and how what how problematic it is until it slips, right? Until we actually can't make um, the response times and we actually can't meet the need, um, and then we're in a much a much more challenging and uh, damaging position. Yep. Um, and it also it it is worth saying that. Um, it's not just a matter of the public's experience of safety and response. You know, your officers um, need to be safe in the response as well, right? So if the department is is strapped, um, then we're all everybody's at risk in a way that is unacceptable. Um, so I get I, what I really want to get to is a way that we can begin to understand your numbers, um, and then my other piece of it from a planning board perspective is to understand where our um, <coughs> where our um, ability to uh, work with developers and proposals and so forth to actually begin to address um, those realities within our process mm -hmm. so that we can quantify the impacts and we can potentially quantify the contribution of developers um, as they're making proposals. Um, so it's, for, for me, I think that, that we need to educate ourselves in the public, but we also have to have a system in place where we can uh, u use hard numbers, hard metrics to, in our process. Absolutely. Uh, <coughs> at, at the, uh, both stations right now, we use, we use the current, uh, the same CAD system, which is uh -huh. called uh, PayMet, but it tracks uh, everything, response times, calls for services, breaks down the different types of uh, incidents that were going on, things of that nature. I'm working on that with our IT director to get that information out on our website and kind of put all our performance measures out on that. But there's something else that we, uh, actually my Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Bennett was working with payment today. <coughs> I think like a, a, a big thing that we need to look at is how many times officers have been on a call, uh, two officers and one has been pulled off to go to another mm -hmm. call. So uh, if you try to get a little bit further in the weeds on yeah, that and yeah. see, see how those patrols are being effective. The same thing if they're you know, doing a community service event and getting pulled away from that as well. Mm -hmm. 
And I think you'll see the, the last slide talks to the, the your points. Uh, we we feel it. We personally feel it. You know, we're a part of the community. Um, we're talking with the, the department heads, uh, town manager, Jennifer, met with John. We just start. It's about kind of agreeing on data points mm -hmm. and fair measures. I can uh, come up here and just start spitting out numbers, but people, you know, I, I want, this is the beginning. You have some dialogue and you say, hey, is this a fair number? If we figure out that, uh, you know, somebody might ask us, you know, how come the fire truck's with the ambulance? And what, what are the resources doing? Does that have to be that many people? And I fill in the blanks. I start mm -hmm. talking about what they do and why they do it. And, and we answer those questions. That's kind of our longer term community risk reduction that's a federal model and they tell you get real data that people believe in that's your goal that, that's that's the longer term conversation based on real data points so we're not just sitting there anecdotally saying oh that call felt mm -hmm. so bad we're, mm -hmm. we're kind of talking broader so I hope we get to yeah. where you're saying it is a little bit of a journey I haven't found somebody that said here it is, right there in this box. <laughs> Just use it. You know, yeah. Look at it. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is that some people really speak data points, and some people need the story with it. But you definitely need the hard data to sure. to substantiate it, and then and for us to be able to work with it too. Because I, you know, speaking for myself, I'm I'm very eager to use this planning process in a way that's fair and founded. Sure. Right. We can't just be arbitrary about it. I want to yeah. have a foundation for uh, what we what we ask from people. Understood. Yeah. Um, just real quick, I don't have any uh, big questions. I just want to say thank you for putting together the presentation. Um, for me personally, I think, you know, as a board, one of our, <laughs> among our responsibilities, one of our most important responsibilities is making sure that what we do uh, takes public safety into account first and foremost. Mm -hmm. you know, I appreciate everything that you guys do and that what your departments do. I know. Um, you know, I take for granted how safe I feel in Hopkinton, but I think, you know, <laughs> that really um, it's a lot of hard work on your part, and I think, you know, that's uh, kudos to you that I feel that way. Um, and it's, uh, I just think it's a really, really important conversation to be having. Um, I think that sometimes we've even had some uh, back and forth, uh, not necessarily disagreements, but conversations among ourselves on the board about, um, you know whether it should be aesthetics versus safety and sure. i think it's really really important for us to to always keep safety as as one of the most important things that we that we talk about on the board so thank you uh, i appreciate uh, the presentation just a couple of things and maybe jennifer we can update it if you remember about two years ago we did an analysis of housing units in this decade either approved or coming up for approval. And I think the number was a 27% increase in housing units from 2010 on. So my guess is that's not built now, but knowing Legacy Farms North was gonna generate so many, et cetera. And I am guessing that your staffing equipment, et cetera, is lagging behind that pace. So we are aware of, because we see it maybe before other people see it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we'd be happy to work with you on advocating for additional resources that are prudent Thanks. to plan ahead for. Uh, it's not without, it's not that we haven't done any catch up, but we're worried about keeping the momentum because it is such right. a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, you have invested in our two departments very well, yeah. mm -hmm. but um, it's, it's growing at a rate that mm -hmm. we're not used to, kind of like you mentioned. It's, uh, it's also understanding the ways, so one of the days that you were in, it's understanding the ways that different uses that are attractive uses. We welcome, sure. we welcome the, that piece of growth in the town that is, you know, it's a service that we welcome and it's, a, it's yep. you know, a business that we welcome. Um, but previous to having it, we didn't necessarily understand the impact of exactly. on the emergency services. And so um, we, ha you know, okay, planning is better if we can look forward and, and prepare for it. But sometimes we learn things from exactly. new uses and we have to then catch up. Yep. And I think people forget, I think an area with the largest township in Middlesex <laughs> County and area. Right. So servicing that from a central location uh, is difficult. And then a final kudos 
uh, to both your teams. I had a friend's son staying with me for a while who um, is a victim of the opioid situation. And literally, if you guys weren't there as fast as it was, he would be dead now. Uh, you appeared at my front door, and this is going through the cell phone 911 in probably three and a half minutes, and I'm at the Upton border. And the dispatcher had me stay on the phone until the ambulance actually came. And I looked at the time when I finally got off, which is after the ambulance was there and the ambulance crew was inside, and the entire <laughs> call was six minutes and 52 seconds. And I think that's absolutely exceptional. Uh, and I want to thank both your teams for, uh, I think that's, you know, what we appreciate in the town. And maybe sadly, that's what we expect you to continue to do. Mm -hmm. So realize it's going to be more point. and more difficult to do. Uh, as the population grows. Just yes. to clarify, police got there first. The police, the police did get there first. Well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, seems you said that, I'm just going to point out I got a call and I, about my son and I beat the ambulance. So I don't know what that says about a mom for the time. Okay. Well, we know you drive fast. Uh, well, when you get that kind of call, you yeah. do kind of hit it. So just one um, final thought. Ms. Kramer was mentioning about metrics and it made me think about where I, uh, I seen this and I, I looked on the master plan on my phone because that's the document kind of used for planning and I, I just noticed that, you know, for the school department, there's a nice graph about the rising enrollment and I looked at the police and the fire and there's no nice little graph there. I think if we got <coughs> their information for the amount of calls per year and we just graphed that out, right. I think that would be pretty valuable to add to that. Yep. Yeah. I also think that... Um, so, sorry, Mayor, just to follow. Is there, is there somewhere we can go to for those numbers, or, or can you guys send them to us? Yeah, I did a presentation to the board that had a lot more data points that I could show you. I, uh, I'm going to try to keep squeezing the new fire chief thing out for a little yeah. bit longer, but yeah. I, I was chasing the master plan as I yeah. came in the door. Just something really straightforward. Over the years, the number of calls, right? Yep. So, yeah, simple yeah, graph. I could uh, run the numbers for you. Can okay, you great. Thank you. you got it. it would be interesting to see that against staffing and equipment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. The, the Hopkinton Ashland study, they, they actually overlaid some of those so that, that we actually have really good data points on that. It, it wouldn't be a bad thing probably to add in the town report to just with consistency. It shows over time, you know, in the town report that kind of whatever the key data points are that are, you know, show the, the changing or increasing uh, pressure on the department so people can see it over time easily. Just to give you a quick uh, uh, taste of what we're uh, looking at. Like uh, 2010, the uh, total incident types were 12,484. Last year was uh, 19,791. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, with a couple weeks left in the year, we're at 18,500. Mm -hmm. It's almost yeah. doubled in about yeah. seven years. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Any other comments? Thank you so much. Thank you. It was Thank really you. important. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <coughs> and next on the agenda is the public hearing 253 Lumber Street. If we can have a vote, we continue to reopen the public I'll hearing. I'll move to reopen the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Jennifer, do you want to give a quick intro? Um, Sure. Um, so this application was submitted to the board. Um, this is a, from what I understand, is an ongoing um, quarry operation that their uh, existing permit expired, I believe, in March or m March of this year. Um, and so they're here back before you just to effectively renew the permit, but it's technically a new permit because it's already expired. I don't believe their operation is changing in any way from what they do now. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Paul Alphen. I'm an attorney from Westford, Massachusetts. I represent NESI Realty LLC. I wish my client, Tony Ramos, could be here this evening. He wishes he could be here this evening. But he's uh, presently with doctors, and uh, they told him he couldn't leave the bed. Any, they, he couldn't come to tonight's meeting. So I'm here by myself, and I'll do the best I can to answer your questions. Um, as you probably, many of you know, this site has been used as a quarry for decades. Um, I want to say 100 years, but I don't know that to be true, but maybe some historians know how long it, it's been there, but it's been there for a long time. 
Material from the quarry is found on many historic sites, including the National Mall in Washington, D.C. It's no longer common to use Milford pink granite as it was a century or so ago, so it's used for the restoration and renovation of existing historic structures, um, and uh, including those at the, um, the Lincoln Memorial on the National Mall and also the uh, post office in Manhattan. As, um, as uh, the uh, planner said, this uh, permit was last issued in um, 2011. It got extended for additional two years because of the Permit Extension Act, and it expired this year <coughs> and we've applied to renew um, the operation in exactly the same location, subject, however, to an enlargement of the quarry hole as shown on the plan that we had um, updated a couple months ago we submitted as part of our package. The uh, premises is not located in the flood plain district. Um, some years ago we obtained an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. The conditions are uh, still in place. Um, we, uh, we expect to be uh, held to the requirements of the uh, comments from the Conservation Commission. I understand from reading the memo that was out of the hallway there is also a report from the Conservation Commission, and I haven't seen that, so maybe there's additional requirements that I don't know about yet. Erosion control concerns um, normally attendant to earth removal operations involving sand, gravel, etc., are not applicable to dimensional stone uh, because there's no stockpiling of loam, gravel, or the earth um, excavated from the, the site. Uh, the total area of the project is 16.54 acres, but of course the pouring would be <laughs> limited to the area shown on the plan as the, uh, as the proposed future expansion of the, of the quarry hole. The nature of the site is that there's little and no overburden on top of the quarry of the, uh, the granite outcrop on the premises, thereby essentially eliminating the need of stripping and stockpiling loam or other soil types on the property. The quarry is, uh, granite is quarried on this site primarily by the use of a water jet and diamond wire saw. Uh, those are procedures for cutting of stone that, uh, that should uh, reduce, relatively speaking, the amount, of, uh, the amount of noise generated by those operations. Access to the property is gained through frontage on the northerly end of the property from Lumber Street over gravel access road that's shown on the plan. The operation of the quarry is in full compliance with federal and state, state laws and, and is regularly inspected by the U.S. Department of Labor, Mine, Safety, and Health Administration. And um, dimensional stone is cut from the wall of the quarry, leaving a rock face which is stable and not subject to any degree of erosion, which is the nature of granite itself. The prior permit, and I think the, at least the permit before that and probably all the permits before that, limited trucking to three trips per day, only during specific hours and using specific routes so as to minimize or eliminate traffic impact over roads in the area and possible conflict with public school bus transportation. We fully expect that if the permit is extended that the same conditions will apply. Uh, likewise, the same uh, waiver requests that were applicable to the last uh, permit are applicable to this, uh, this um, permit request. The request is for another two-year uh, period. And I also believe that our client has maintained the bond with the town over the years and has renewed it. And of course, we expect that to be a continued condition of the uh, approval. So that's it in a nutshell. You have the plan. You have more comprehens comprehensive information that we uh, submitted, but I didn't think it was necessary to read all of it to you. And. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Just to touch on, and, and because looking at the plan, the proposed new quarrying area is 1,750 feet. And the it looks like you quarry down from the top of quarry to bottom ranges from 50 feet to 37 feet, roughly, as far as down. So I'm looking at the bottom right of the quarry itself saying proposed new quarrying area and then where it says existing quarry to the upper right of that it says top of quarry 60.9 bottom of quarry elevation 23.8 and right. then below that it says top of quarry 68.3 bottom of quarry uh, elevation 17.3 
So that's roughly 1,750 feet and then 40 to 50 feet excavation dam. Correct? I believe your math okay. is correct. Okay. Jennifer, any follow up on what was? Um, no, just to acknowledge that Don McAdam, who is our conservation administrator, is also our emergency removal agent, um, and he did review the application, and um, the letter was in. The only um, three items that he would just, uh, want would recommend the board consider is that we condition that um, they monitor stormwater runoff and pumping operations from any renewed quarry operations to ensure that all silt-laden runoff is directed into the sedimentation basin and that they conduct periodic inspections and actively maintain the sedimentation basin to ensure that it is functioning properly and to remove and, and legally dispose of accumulated sediments as needed to maintain capacity and designated infiltration rates. And finally, to allow town expect inspectors to periodically enter the site to verify that the sedimentation basin is functioning properly and is being actively maintained. Okay. Comments from the board? I have a, a functional question, I guess. Uh, I was on the CONCOM in 2011. Um, does part of this project uh, have to also be approved by Milford? There's no quarrying operation in the town of Milford. It just is the border of the property? The, 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 it's, um, it's no, the only reason we gave notice to the town of Milford is because it would we abut the town of Milford and yeah. the, your new permitting requirements or, or the old permitting requirements which are now being enforced required we give notice to the to the uh, the butters in that town, but no part of this operation is in Milford. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Okay. I see that. <coughs> Excuse me. I see that you're requesting a, uh, a waiver from the em environmental assessment. Um, was there ever an environmental assessment done? I can't on on honestly answer that question. I, I don't know. It would have been uh, beyond before my time. We got involved when the, uh, you well, know, my, uh, my old law partner was uh, represented the, fi the prior owner, so I can't. But personally, I got involved around 2011 when the, uh, when this current client got it from a bankruptcy mm -hmm. uh, breakup. So mm -hmm. I honestly don't know. I could find out, but I don't know offhand. I mean, it occurs to me that if there is one, would like to see it. And if it's outdated, then maybe maybe that sh we would want to see a new one. But I, I mean, I honestly, I don't know if there's been an assessment done, so. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. And I think the comment in my application is that the environmental impact um, would be neg negligible where if we do have the stormwater control through the siltation basin and as, uh, as we've said the cutting of the quarry doesn't necessarily result in any stockpiling of materials etc so the, it would have the same impact that it has had over these many decades mm -hmm. but if there are specific concerns that the board may have in terms of the context uh, of the content <coughs> of an environmental analysis Glad to hear. I mean, I'm not looking for <laughs> anything in particular. But I just want to know what it was, what it said, and what what are the potential issues that we could be looking at. I, I will I will yeah. I will check the files, see if we can find something. Okay. And, and just to piggyback on that, why would you why are you looking for a waiver for that? What is the reasoning? That it's um, as I said, to to provide another report. What the report is going to say is that we cut dimensional stone from the granite. We don't create any stockpiles of materials. Okay. I'm sorry. We, we went to the Conservation Commission years ago. We have a rooting for the stormwater. The impact of this will continue to be the impact that it has had for many, many years, which is, I think, proven by experience to be applicable <coughs> as far as we all know. And just, um, we have, I uh, can electronic files back to 2006 and in 2006 they also requested a waiver from the environmental assessment so what mm -hmm. wasn't done then so I don't, we don't have anything electronically mm -hmm. further back than that I'd have to dig through storage to find <laughs> out. Mm -hmm. How extensive is an environmental assessment? It depends upon whatever you it is you want us to to submit I think it's entirely up to you 
I will say this on an environmental front. It, without the, having a diesel generator, as you mentioned, uh, it, it is a somewhat better uh, environmental situation. Uh, the, the neighbors who you notified uh, uh, haven't had many noise concerns. Uh, one neighbor has contacted me. I know people don't like it when people do that, but uh, uh, they were concerned about change in ownership. But I said, well, this happened a long time ago, and um, and it seems to be going well. So I don't I, I don't see any problems with that. Um, the one thing we haven't talked about in the meeting it, it knows is that one of the is it a federal requirement or a state requirement to have the environmental review and no, that, it's your local right. so because we haven't we haven't had that done um, to speaking as a board member I'd, I'd be open to having asking for one to be done uh, in light that there has been one for has not been one for a while, and Don's comments uh, seem to be in line with that as well. So um, Don being our um, earth removal agent slash um, conservation administrator. So uh, uh, that's just my two cents. One of the things as we address that is we have to identify the scope of the environmental. Yeah. So exactly. and where, uh, do we, where do we get guidance on that? I don't have too much quarry experience. If, if I could suggest <laughs> is um, without doing a delay and a whole, you know, we want to identify the issues. If uh, we ask the applicant to submit an explanation of the stormwater runoff, et cetera. Uh, do our peer reviewers have the ability to um, review and respond? Yeah, they. Um, we had sent this to them just as part of our normal processing. Um, and then they called me and said, what am I reviewing here? And when I read the Earth Removal Bylaw, it didn't indicate that we would require peer review and because it was an ongoing operation and okay. they weren't making any changes except for that small area, I didn't, I made an executive decision. <laughs> I didn't think yeah. that, you know, waste the money to do that. But, you know, if the board wants to make that call, we can certainly do that. I would just need to know what scope you want them to review it under. What are they looking for? So uh, I'll just, uh, my concern is that it's possible it's never been done. And then even if it has been done, um, standards change over time. But I very, very candidly, you know, don't know how I would scope it in any way. I'd have to get some guidance on that. I, I would actually concur with what Muriel's, I'm sitting here thinking, I don't even know what to ask for. So, I mean, we would need guidance for sure if, if we decided to do that. Could we ask our peer reviewer to <laughs> come yeah. up with issues we'd like the applicant to address? And, and speaking for myself <coughs> and not for the board, and I think we all don't know what we don't know, to be honest with you, is we're not looking for a huge multi-month or year analysis, but we want to get some issues identified uh, if they are some concerns from our peer reviewer, and then it just ask you to address it and have them look at it and give a blessing or not a blessing. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I think, um I mean, when I think granite operations, I think radon gas, in addition to all the other, all the other, uh, you know, the stormwater runoff. Um, but I think, again, I, my concern is that I think it may have never been done, and I don't know what the issues to be identified are. So um, I, I like the idea of, of talking to our peer reviewer and see what they would identify something that we'd want to know about. My main concern is stormwater runoff. And from the granite work itself, it is dust. But what about the machinery, whatever else that happens? Uh, because it's proximity uphill from the uh, Echo Lake, which is the reservoir for Milford, uh, and where this does not have to go in front of Milford, uh, I think maybe just making sure that 
everything's all in place is, is, is a proper thing to do. Uh, in the document it says, well, most of the water runoff evaporates or goes to groundwater. Well, um, the, just, just to make sure that that's the case is, is what I'm asking for, is what I'm looking for in a, in a study. I mean, for, from my perspective, if I'm going to approve a waiver for something, I want to know what I'm approving. Right. So what am I exactly approving the waiver from? I don't, I don't know what's required from an envir environmental assessment and a quarry, so that's that's the only. I just want to make sure I'm, yep. you know, making the right decision. I have a suggestion that uh, that perhaps you could make it a condition of approval that within a certain period of time we submit the environmental review based upon criteria that apparently is yet to be developed, but would be <laughs> developed within a certain period of time by your by your staff, rather than us waiting for the criteria, then engaging a third party to do it, submitting it, having it peer reviewed, which could take us out for a period, of, you know, for an un unknown period of time. I think that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. And it says the decision is due by February 1st. Is that right? Yeah, in our bylaw that there's like a time period. Um, we could ask for an extension if we felt that there wasn't enough information to, to make a decision. Fan, what are your thoughts on taking that approach? Because I'd see an uncomfort level. <laughs> I guess um, my discomfort is uh, approving something that I don't <coughs> know, um, and then once. I don't want to make you jump through hoops unnecessarily, um, but if this assessment has never been done, um, then I think that I would want to see it. So I don't know. What <coughs> I, I think the I think the logical first place to start is check the file and see if there's been ever been something done. And um, and I, I and then secondly. What's involved in the assessment? Right. You know, and then once, once we understand, it, is it two steps, three steps, sixteen steps? I don't know what's involved in an assessment. I don't know how long that assessment would take. I, I think we're working on a lot of right. unknowns here, so I think it's really hard for us to make any kind of a decision tonight. Right. I also would like the so feedback from like I, again, I, I'm not in a big hurry to make an onerous or unnecessary steps. Feedback from our peer reviewer, right. um, what would be useful for us to ask for. If uh, if the assessment has a never been done, or is are there new standards that we, we would be more more interested in? So to keep the process rolling, if the board agrees, is we'll ask Jennifer to contact our peer review with a list of what they suggest we ask for, um, and as soon as that comes in, even if it's before the meeting, mm -hmm. get that to you. We want we want to do it at a timely basis, mm -hmm. then maybe at the next meeting we can take some time to look at it if we want to add or delete, and then shoot for a response uh, to that hopefully by the second meeting in January, and then we can address it at that time. We don't want to hold you up, but we do want to get Importantly, th th that the, the existing review right. too into mm -hmm. us in time for the P our peer review to look right. at that as well. If, uh, if there is one. If there, if there is, is one, yeah. Because right. it goes back, the quarry goes back to... The turn of the century. The turn of the century. <laughs> and not the most yeah. recent one. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I know. Yeah. People said that that's why they call it Milford Pink, is that used to be Milford. Okay. It was, so it was there before the town line changed, whenever yeah. that was. Okay. Is there a historian here? Hmm. No. No. Well... Okay. Can I, well, a little bit, but not, not on the grant. <laughs> Just can I ask, have there been any issues? Uh, we haven't received any comments from the abutters or neighbors about no, any. No, but there are people in the audience, so I'm not sure if they're here for that. But right. So I would be curious, since it's been an operation for a long time, if there have been any issues that we should be brought aware of. Because I'd never heard I, of any issues. I asked myself. the earth removal agent, and he said there has never, that he knows of, been a complaint. Been a complaint, okay. Is anybody here to discuss? Why don't you come up, identify yourself, and your address, please. Hi, everybody. I'm Dale Cratch. I live at 251 Lumber Street, which is one of the two properties that are shown on that uh, plan. Mm -hmm. 
So we've enjoyed good neighborship. Uh, I can't speak for everybody in my particular neighborhood, but we've enjoyed good neighborship with the uh, operation of the quarry. We've been there since the beginning of 95, and uh, their trucks have never obscured the road. Um, they've never done any stockpiling on the road or left trailers out on the road while they were removing material. And as far as noise and that kind of stuff, we, we, we barely hear the operation. We know they're running back there, but it's a, it's a pretty mild uh, uh, level of noise from, from my residence anyway. So we uh, look forward to continuing uh, the same relationship if that's the way it goes. So you're the property that on the plan is I'm 251, so I'm the furthest south of any residence there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So not, not, not to interrupt, but I just reviewed quickly, briefly, the, ta the planning board's earth removal manual which um, lists the request submission requirements and everything and under environmental impact assessment. The purpose shall be to determine the existing and expected post-activity environmental conditions including surfacing groundwater quality, surface water runoff, wetlands, floodplain, wildlife habitats, assess the projected impacts and propose and discuss mitigation measures. Okay. Pretty, it's pretty extensive. <laughs> That's, that's a lot. Environmental impact assessments are usually pretty. Well, I go ahead. I've, ne I've never been involved in one, so I have no idea. Now, here is a question. Do we want to see it based on as if this was kind of ground zero and starting from scratch uh, or just the incremental? Yeah, I don't. Incremental. Yeah, incremental, I think. I think if we're starting from ground zero, well, this is going to take a wanted. very long time. <laughs> I don't think anybody <laughs> in this room is going to take a long time. Yeah. I think the incremental approach is fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that might give you something to go on because I'm guessing the incremental, your experience level from doing the rest of it allows you to address, uh, address that. Um, does that give you enough to go on? Yeah, just let me know if that is the scope or whether I'm going to get something else. Or well, I, so is that enough for the board? Or do is you that enough for the board? I mean, it seems pretty comprehensive, and that's what's in the yeah. guidelines. <coughs> and I know we have the, ho when, uh, the holiday, but when's our... Our next meeting is January 8th. So if you want to shoot, if we have time on the... Oh, sure, I'll get an engineer work working on this next week. Okay. <laughs> is there any, um, <laughs> when, yeah. in your archives or your history, uh, is there any discussion as to why the waiver was approved no. in 2006? It, I mean, it's probably, yeah. I, to be honest I'm with you, curious. when this operation started, it, there was no requirement, I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, that's right. what I'm thinking, too. And, and so I'm guessing that previous boards had the same quandary that we had and, and, uh, and didn't really know what to look for to or ask for or with the, with the, <laughs> right, to this point. right? Mm -hmm. um, but it would at least be for due diligence it would at least be worth our while to make sure that we um, if our peer reviewers said you know you know came in and recommended a smaller scope I'd be I'd probably be very okay. willing to consider that mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. um, have a comment. evening Joe Markwood 240 Lumber Street I'm on the westerly side of Lumber Street, uh, right about opposite the access drive that goes into the quarry. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also been there since about 95 and uh, consider the quarry operation to be a good neighbor. I really don't have uh, any real issues uh, with what they have done and I wish them continued success up there. I'd like to see them uh, continue to do well. The concern I have is the same one I voiced in uh, 2011 at the last hearing. Um, we all want to enjoy our properties all over town uh, as residents. The concern we have is, I have, is the, um, the equipment storage. Just want to make sure that um, that um, condition included in the 2011 gets p carried on with this one in 2017, that that uh, equipment storage is done so in a manner that uh, screens it from the road and from the neighbors. Uh, quite frankly, you spent a lot of time on my front porch, and the last thing I want to do is look down that driveway and see the loader or the crane parked right there against the fence uh, for long periods of time. So I guess I ju would just ask the board to consider that concern as you should develop your conditions moving forward. Okay. Thank you. 
Is that in our proposed site conditions? Or we have um, the existing it's in conditions. The existing, if it's in the existing 2011 permit, then that's uh, I would imagine why you're that. But I didn't do any proposed conditions because they were just asking for the same conditions. Okay. okay. Moving forward, if that's your question. Mm -hmm. So why? What I'd suggest is um, provide. It's just made the guidelines list. Also, ask our peer reviewer to take a quick look. And I know with the holidays, if even they want to reduce that scope at all, and then you know we're not looking for a 400-page report, but a letter addressing uh, the issues. So process moving forward. Does the board want to see the scope before I give it to the applicant, or does the board want to take a vote to proceed with whatever data comes back with, or this, whichever is less? I'm personally comfortable since we were all. I'm we very don't know. We don't taking know. Beta's advice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. very comfortable. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> we need a vote on that, or do we? Um, I, it would be helpful just so in case somebody says why. Are you doing well, this? I don't know how everybody else feels, but I'm comfortable with Beta's yeah. input. Do we want to make a motion. Uh, I, I'll, make, I'll move that. that okay. We, yeah. we use I'll Beta's second. advice. I'll second. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstain. Discussion. Yes. Does, does that include oh. Don's? Or we're just talking about. Well, Don just we're not had three additional conditions. We're not going to get rid of Don's. There was anything else. No, that includes Don's. Well, no, Don is a condition that's not the environmental. It's separate from, it's the, separate environmental from the environmental report environment. that we're discussing, but we just didn't talk about getting rid of them. Okay. So, is it, when Beta gets back to me, hopefully soon, I can forward it. Just forward it, because mm -hmm. we'll keep them, the momentum going, and if you're ready, the eighth. And we'll the, the, the piece of information of whether or not there ev ever was one is important for the record. I'll have people dig the, in the old files. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's possible, you know. Okay. We have a vote to continue. We have a time. Um, so we have a stormwater management permit at 730 for the south of road lots. Um, is this the 8th? Mm -hmm. Were you th thinking the 8th? Well, it depends. Depends on how quickly I can get. You know, I was joking about trying to get something done next yeah. week, but you know, who knows? I'll give it a shot. And if it's not going to work, we'll just let you know, and you'll continue right. the hearing on the eighth. In okay. all honesty, too, um, our specific peer reviewer from Beta is on vacation next week, so if he doesn't get something to meet this week before Friday, it's, it may right. not happen. Well, okay. why don't we put it off at the eighth, and then if we have to continue, we'll sure. Continue okay. It. Right. So, and I think if you start working with what Jennifer provides, it'll only potentially go down from there. Okay. So um, so you have, like I said, the 730 public hearing with Saddle Hill Road on their stormwater management permit. Um, do you want to give them an hour? Do you think it's going to need an hour for stormwater management? Probably. After they cut down all the Okay. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I'm thinking the water is just going to 830. 835. On January 8th. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. I just need that and then vote. A motion and a vote. We did oh. do a A motion to oh. continue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Motion to continue, to continue the public hearing until January 8th at 8.35. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. And before we go, I've got a public swear. Okay. Oh. Well, um, <laughs> so we I have a le we have a letter um, from the developer of um, Whisper Ridge yeah. requesting a continuation to the January twenty second meeting. Um, they were not prepared with any new information this evening and didn't feel like it would be a good idea. They also are wanting to go before the ConCom at least initially. So um, they're getting ready to do all that. So he called me this morning or this afternoon and asked for a continuation. So. Um, if you'd like to do that, we have um, our favorite friends from Chamberlain and Whalen coming back on January 22nd. Uh, I've been wondering where they where just filed on <laughs> Friday. <laughs> so, um, so are they at 7:30? They're then? at 7:30. Um, that has not been advertised yet, though, so we can change the time on. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah, you, know you win. That's awesome. Yeah, that is. 
<laughs> and now you know why I didn't do it for the public hearing. That is Can we get something. the extra photographer to come get a picture? Uh, oh, that is so oh. funny. That is pretty great, actually. I'm, I'm not going to lie. That's epic. <laughs> okay. So, uh, <laughs> I can't even. I know, right? <laughs> Whose idea was this ugly sweater? Yes. Was, you, no. Because he had the best sweater. <laughs> um, okay, so um, whatever you'd like to do as far as um, timing goes, we can put the continuation of Whisper Ridge on first and move Chamberlain and Waylon. I don't think we need to move it. I mean, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, so yeah. um, we'll give Chamberlain and Waylon an, an hour. Yeah. So, All right, hold on. so can someone make that? <laughs> I'll make a motion to continue Wait, this, the Whisper Ridge. Um, hold on one second. Public <laughs> hearing. Business first, people. Appreciate Party all the, the snap, uh, Snapchatting <laughs> that's going on. I'll South make a time. motion to continue the public hearing for Whisper Ridge Open Space Landscape Preservation Development to January 22nd at 8.35. Second. All on. Hi. Oh no, I'm saying oh. I'm in favor. I'm sorry. Okay, well, in favor. Hi. 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 Opposed, abstain. So All far. right, now you can take your silly little pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Post uh, them on Facebook. Can you <laughs> just need them oh, Kelly, can you lean in? Oh, oh hold on. Can we get one? There we go. Oh. All right, ready? Is Kelly looking? Oh. Go. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Um, then we, oh, we just need. need oh, I didn't get to That's okay. That's good. No, no, no. no. I need the, the vomiting we need unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> we need the um, yeah. minutes approved, right. please. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, so carry. Perfect. Any new business? A couple real quick go. questions. They both per pertain to tonight. So I didn't want to hold up the meeting before, but I didn't understand. I thought Roy was asking for a couple streets to be approved. No, no, no he just wants for one. One, one street. One. There's and a there's a other couple others. That right, a couple of others but in which other developments. Just, and what we're going to do is approve them at the right. same time. So, but his one is Legacy South. Yes. 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 So, okay, all those other small roads are going to remain private. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank forever. you. Oh, forever. Forever and ever. Oh. Forever and ever. <laughs> Um, the second point I had, I was just thinking, and we, I could bring it up, um, but just in general for the, the, the quarry. So, like out in Montana and stuff like that, I know this is not that, but what happens is all the um, the businesses go bankrupt, and then you know it kind of sunsetting it is is stuck with the the state or the town or whatever. Do we have to worry about something like that sunsetting it, and what to be done with that quarry afterwards? Like how they'll leave well, they it when they're done. And um, your your permit's only good for two years, and they have to come back every two years. Or they can only get a one year extension. So the reason they had multiple extensions passed is because the state had passed the permit extension act twice, okay. which granted them additional time. Um, this one would be good for two years, and then two years they'd come back if they wanted to continue operations and get another extension. I, mean, I wouldn't even know what to do with a quarry, right. though. What do you do with well, it? Well, I though? think we have so many in this part of the country. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's pretty stone. fascinating that that stone, though, is used in yeah. so many... The Lincoln, yeah. the Lincoln yeah. Memorial yeah, and, it's the, really yeah. cool. and the Manhattan yeah. Post Office, Manhattan, I think you said. the Washington Monument, yeah. stop. There's a piece yeah. of Hopkinton all over the country, yeah. right? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, I was just wondering if there's any other... Well, it sounds like this is the only place, right? Milford. Well, there are quarries in Milford, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, so. Oh, Milford Pink. But I don't think this grant is. So, so there, is, there are quarries in Milford, and that's. I didn't actually realize... <laughs> That, that was in Hopkinton. I thought I thought the no, quarries were well, all in Milford. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah that, all that that Milford pink is is used. But there's another quarry that's filled with water that the kids go swimming and fishing it's in. Dangerous. They, they have to walk They're back to it. To so on. Uh, we we discourage completely. Yes. Yeah. Would not no, I know people. Yeah. Somebody's died there somebody died swimming. In the hit yes, their head. Indeed. Yeah. Never I came back. I would not put that on the, of the meeting because I would not have been able to make it. <laughs> John, did you make that or did no. you buy that? I had a <laughs> lot of research to go for. <laughs> um, and before we go, does somebody have envelopes? Oh, oh. Uh, I'll put them here. I want to thank you. You have them, John. Uh, oh, <laughs> thank you both for uh, all your help during the year. And um, I just want to say I apologize. Oh, Kobe, I opened it by mistake. I misunderstood the direction. <laughs> So I opened it. So I apologize. And she put in an extra thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it is uh, breaking the rules. <laughs> the rules. So we can have a motion to uh, 
adjourn? I'll make it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed abstain. Same Aye. point. Aye. Oh, Aye. You didn't get I think we Starving. should go get a happy holidays, everybody. Oh. We get something to eat, too. We didn't get a